Hello there, and welcome back to Terraformer Craft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I just learned a very useful recipe for making seared stone. We take our raw stones, in this case, rhyolite, we toss it in our casting basin, and we melt two clay balls in our uh, smeltery here. We can then cast it onto that, onto the rock, and and uh, turn it into a seared stone, which can then be used to make, well, seared bricks. And these, I think, can be used straight away on the anvil. Yes, they can. They can be used straight away on the Tinker's anvil. We don't have to do anything extra, but we could also cut them into seared bricks for use in the smeltery, for, for building the smeltery. So that's actually a lot cheaper than the other way, which is making grout. And if we do that, and I mentioned I was going to do this. I made up a bunch of the plates or the casts so we can use the cast to make most tools now. But there we go. Oh, oh wait, that's a regular brick that. Oh, oh well, that's not a big deal so we have an extra brick by accident uh but yeah now instead of making the grout we can just pour clay onto a raw stone to make the seared stone which we'll need for the melter or smeltery always there used to not be this melter we used to just be the smeltery so having it now confuses me sometimes all right but now we have that we can go and make the tin brass bronze one of them and make the anvil so that's uh one block of brass down just another two more blocks to go and that's enough to make our anvil the tinker's anvil All right, so we're going to be making a bow very shortly, and we're going to need arrows for that bow. So you, of course, need feathers. There are two ways to get feathers in Terra from a craft. One is killing an avian like a goose here, or if you get up behind them, shift and right click on them, you will pluck feathers from them. Uh, you'll get three to four on a wild goose. If it's domesticated and it's fully um, familiarized, you might get more. You might get up to six. I'm not sure. Uh, the thing is, every time you pluck from them, they take damage. They take half a heart. And since birds like geese only have between two and three hearts, yeah, every time you pluck them, you only get about three plucks and then you can't anymore until you heal them. So geese are, of course, always wild. You are limited to how many times you can collect feathers from them. If you have ducks, chicken or quail, well, then you can heal them up after you uh, pluck them. But it does use up wear and tear. So you're once you pluck feathers from them enough times they can't be harvested anymore they can't lay any more eggs so you're going to want to sort of portion out probably just use the males for feathers and the females for eggs that sort of deal but yes that's how you get feathers aside from just hunting uh, but yeah, that's how you get feathers, and we're going to need feathers plus flint plus uh, sticks, just like in vanilla terraformer. Sorry, just like in vanilla Minecraft to make arrows. So now I have everything ready back at home. Let's go back, make some arrows, make our bow, and then we can go back to the nether and actually start collecting some resources from a distance without having to necessarily risk ourselves. All right, let's make the Tinker's Anvil. That was nice and easy. And now we can make even more Tinker's items. So if we want the bow here, the long uh, long bow, we're gonna need two 
bow limbs, a grip, and a bowstring. I have a bowstring. So we can toss that in. But I do not have bow grips or limbs. In fact, I am out of those. All right, let's make a few more of the patterns. Yeah, that'll run. And we have over here a bow limb cast. What did I put the gold in there for? What was I going to cast? I don't even remember what I was going to cast that gold into. Oh, by the way, I accidentally duped my pickaxe. Don't know how I did it. I'm not going to show you how I did it. But what I am going to show you me doing is tossing the duped pickaxe into the lava. So, okay. Well, we're going to leave it there to despawn because it does want to be picked up. Uh, burn in the lava. Right. The Encyclopedia of Tinkering. I need to make another book and then I can use the gold to make the Encyclopedia of Tinkering, which is another Tinker's Construct book. Uh, we're going to toss that in there for now. Right. If I want to make a bow limb, I could either make it out of... Well, here's the, here's the really cool thing about Tinkers. See, you can make items out of any metal you want. So actually out of any material you want. So I can go grab some bamboo, make two limbs and one uh, grip all out of wood. And then in the future, upgrade them using iron, pig iron, slime, cobalt, whatnot, whatever I actually want or need at the time. Let's grab some bamboo since I have plenty of that. Make a bamboo. Uh, bow and then in the future we can upgrade it once we actually have a bow made so we're going to want a bow grip that's got the flexible you know what I should grab some it's a plank I need right okay so that gives us our two grips and our uh, our one grip and our two limbs, and that gives us a wooden bamboo longbow. Gives us cultivating, stringy, and flexible. 1.1 draw speed, uh, 0.75 accuracy, 1.6 projectile damage. It's got two upgrades, one ability. And here we see that the bamboo bow limb gives it a little more durability, a little faster draw speed, but slower vis um, velocity and less accuracy. So knowing that, let's make a, another bow limb out of wood. Then we can swap that out. And the accuracy goes back to 0.8. The durability goes down just a little bit, but I think this will be just fine. And then we can upgrade this on the anvil that we made or on the workbench and we can give it things like bulk quiver two leather and three slimy vines will give it bulk quiver which means we can store arrows in the bow we can give it crystal shot if we run out of arrows it will shoot crystals it will use durability to shoot those crystals though uh we'll use durability to generate the crystals and then durability to shoot the crystal Luck is fortune. So, uh, and I'm breaking. That's going to require us to get shulkers and dragon's breath and netherite. That's a little ways away. But now we've got a bow and I need to eat. I can go over here, grab some sticks, some feathers, a bit of flint. And the arrow recipe is the same as it is in vanilla. Okay, I could have sworn it was the same it was in vanilla. There we go. Helps if you do it right. And there we go. Now we've got bow and arrow. We can go take out some 
place. And anything else in the nether that we come across. And so we can actually make our backpack there. So let's might as, I was gonna say might as well do that now. Might as well run down into our cellar, grab a bit more food for the nether so we can heal up a little easier, and then go. How about a little bacon for the road? Nope. My uh skeletons have finally despawned. Took it long enough. Let's make sure it's actually safe down here, unlike last time. Okay. Well, the blaze have despawned. If I pick up that. Here, please. There's a blaze now where I was a minute ago. these drop coal and I can turn this into coal coke Ooh, nice uh, but that's two blaze rods I need another three I'm trying to figure out how to get up there without mining into the walls whatnot I might have to That was good to learn. Arrows do nothing against the wither skeletons. Makes sense. Arrows do nothing against skeletons in Terra Firmacraft. But again, there are no wither skeletons normally in Terra Firmacraft, so I didn't know if if that would be true here. Although it makes sense that it would since they're still skeletons. They use the same mob data. where I got myself into this time.
All right, looks like I made it up into the top side of another fortress up here. Ooh, Enderman, don't want to look at him. I never really got to explore these nether fortresses. They were in the, all the mods mod pack I was playing, but I didn't spend too much time exploring the nether. But I do know that there are plenty of loot chests in here. Yeah, just like that. And then we can go further up. And there are more chests upstairs. And if I'm lucky, maybe blaze rods in some of these? I got magma cubes. Let's see. Compressed stone. These are for pneumatic craft. Or at least they're from pneumatic craft. Did they have a purpose? Not sure. Ammo. Capacitors. These are also pneumatic craft. Those are going to be useful. Horse armor. Becomes a lot of iron. Logistics core. Diamond horse order armor, gold horse armor, slimy seeds. Ooh, those are, huh? Nuke virus. Well, we're getting plenty of loot. Whether I'm going to need any of this or not is another question. Was there a way up this whole time and I didn't need to tunnel? No, this should take me down into a. Uh, like a nether quar not quarry, mine. Yeah, okay. I don't want to be down there right now. It's like a abandoned mine shaft down there, but the nether version. Kind of neat. A lot to explore. A lot I don't want to deal with right now. Tell you though, I'm going plenty of iron by the time I'm done in here. I was not expecting that. Okay, I gotta get out of here because I'm out of food and I'm out of health. And I got stuck for a split second. I'm starving. <sighs> yep. Oh, be right back. Do I not die from starving damage?
Okay, well, I guess we don't die from starving damage. We're just left on half a heart. And we're back from the nether. I've reset up the crushing wheels. I've also, you know, recovered my health. Uh, I need to get up here safely. I'll figure out a better way in the future. Toss one in there. That gets us three blaze powder. Okay, it was three blaze powder and then 25% chance of another three. So we did not get lucky, but we have the blaze powder we need. What we don't have is the backpack we need. <laughs> And uh, I was just checking, it's the backpack that gives pick up. I thought you could shift click to pick it up, but for some reason that wasn't working. It's not the blaze backpack that gives you fire resistance. It's the one you make with magma cubes or magma, uh, magma creams. Where is it? Here we go. The Magma Cube Traveler's Back gives you immunity to fire damage. So I'm probably going to craft up one of these also in the future. So we can have one of them at least with us when we're in the nether. But for now, I want this. Oh, wait. Let's make the fire charge first. Now we can either use a blaze powder or we can use a fire starter. I'm going to use the fire starter. So let's limited resource and that should give us everything from that we do keep our bucket that's good i didn't think we'd lose it but i didn't want to really risk it uh, now we have the blaze traveler's backpack which gives us immunity to fall damage and small fireballs so what we can now do is go craft up the iron and gold upgrades again Actually, we got a ton of gold and a ton of iron when we were in nether. I might as well use those. Uh, this is the iron. It says it's a unknown ingot, but that's because it's non terra firma craft iron. But that should not matter for the recipe. It does not. Awesome. Likewise. Ooh, we need terra firma craft gold. So we're going to need to convert this gold into terra firma craft gold in order to use it for the gold upgrade. That's not a very big deal. We just need to melt it back down in either that or that. But this does mean I can at least do this plus that to give us the iron tier. Which gives us a bit more space. And we'll upgrade it again. And then next time we go into nether, we'll swap on that backpack instead. Something I noticed while looking through our resources is this necrotic bone can be used as a modifier for tinkers. Uh, it requires a bit more than just the necrotic bone, although I think if we make the item out of the bone. Yeah, it gives us the necrotic stat. So what we can do now is make a piece, let's say a sword head out of the necrotic bone and it will give it a uh, yeah, necrotic bone. I'll give it a necrotic trait, which we look here. Critical hits on enemies drain their life to heal you. Yeah, that's definitely worth putting on a sword or an ax that we're going to use as our main combat weapon because we'll heal ourselves when we use it. Where's the best place to put it? Maybe as a tool handle. Make a necrotic tool handle make an iron blade and a flint binding and upgrade this sword. I'll have more durability. I'll do more damage and it will also leech life, which will be very nice. Oh, something else I want to check diamonds. It used to be you could apply a diamond directly to an item to give it bonus durability. I don't know if that's still a thing. Yes. Okay. It gets bonus durability and it should also get a damage increase. Yes. It goes from 4.96 to 5.46. So a 0.5 increase to damage 
also uh, my mining speed goes up, but eats up a, a upgrade slot. So, okay, let's make the new uh, X, uh, not X head, the new blade, the new small blade head. Let's make a new tool binding, not tool binding, a new handle, tool handle. Yeah, new tool handle. And I want the tool binding to be flint. Let's do that. And let's eat first. I was slightly mistaken. We need two tool handles, not a, not a tool handle and a binding. So the sword we already have has a flint tool handle and a bone handle. So we just need to make a new bone handle. And we have the new... We want that and then this should replace there we go that replaces the handle the bone handle so now we have a necrotic bone handle flint tool handle iron blade does 6.2 damage has 200 durability which i mean is not a lot right compare it to Tear from a craft where my steel, sorry, my iron axe has 2000 durability. So this is not really a great weapon, but it can be infinitely repaired. So that makes it a bit better. And then we can, of course, upgrade it. So we put the diamond on it. That takes one of its two upgrade slots. It now does a little bit more damage, has a lot more durability and because of its traits, it can now 5% life steal. Diamond increases durability and stats. Hitting things attracts nearby items so we can... It's a magnet. Jagged does more damage with the lower durability. Necrotic. Crit hits heal. And it can still be used to shear. So that's going to be our primary sword. Uh, it's still not the best item out there. But it's a good start. And then we can upgrade it further when we get, say, Cobalt or... Oh, there's another metal. Uh, let's see. Okay, so you can use Cobalt to alloy alloy into something. Okay, you can use Cobalt to alloy, alloy into multiple things. I think this is one of the best items. Stat-wise, I'm... I'm not remembering. Insatiable. Yeah, I don't remember, but it does give a lot of durability. So like we're going to want something like this eventually as the blade. But not now. So another recipe I learned recently. If you put your paper in the deployer and then canvas or leather on the depot, it will turn it into three books instead of one. Yeah. Not that we need three books, but you know what? If we're going to get uh, books, might as well get multiple from one go. There we go. That's the Encyclopedia of Tinkering. You know what? I think this is just a lot of what we already knew. I was expecting it to tell us more, but it does not look like it is. But it does give you an explanation of all different tools and what lot what not oh <laughs> this was pointed out to me i've been calling the matt talk a matt lock no it will not solve crimes for you it will just chop down trees and dig dirt so yeah uh so with that we're gonna call it an end here for today i did make up this quickly stone barrel let's see if i can find it quickly Required six raw stone and a raw stone slab. And then we can feed it stuff like silkworms, which we had over a thousand of. And it makes vanilla dirt, which we can then use for any farms that require vanilla dirt. So the hemp. We're now growing even more hemp using the vanilla dirt, which is good because we can then use the hemp seeds to make... 
seed oil, which can then be used to make biomass or what I've been using the seed oil for mostly is mixing with uh, tanned hides to make leather. But the biomass we can use to make bioethanol, which works as a fuel source. Yeah, 20 minutes for bioethanol, but that would require cinder flour, biomass, and sugar. We should be able to get sugar fairly easy, can't we? Boil sugar cane. Uh, okay, so we can't make sugar with honey like you can in normal terra. Uh, well, perma life. Sugar mass. That requires sugar cane. So we're gonna have to go find sugar cane if we want to make a lot of sugar. And then cinder flour is just crushed nether rack, which is just crushed nether rack that gets crushed. So it gets crushed twice. But that's another fuel source we can make. But I think this is a good place to end for today. Next episode, I'm gonna be doing the FAQ. I've already got a bunch of questions saved so we can go over them. And we're gonna work on building the base a bit. Since I've been neglecting the base, just give you an idea of what I want to do. I need to make more roofs, put them along the outside wall, make our forge room plus windmill look nicer, give it a second story, raise the roof up a bit further so we can have storage running all the way up and maybe put some stuff like the engineer's workbench and other stuff upstairs. And uh, we're actually going to finish this area here. And I've got a pretty cool design I want to do. So you guys will see that next week. Until then, thank you for joining me today. Hope you've had a wonderful day. And I'll see you next week. Later. <laughs>